Okay, in this video, the main thing that I want to show you is how you can select just the surrounding counties. So we don't want Philly to be part of it, but we don't want the whole US, right? Because this file is everything. And when you work on projects, the more data you have around, the slower things are going to be and the more problems you run into. So sometimes when you're working on a larger project, you want to just isolate the files that you actually need for the project. So what we want to do is we want to select Philly and just the surrounding county. So there's a couple of ways we could do it. And for me, it would just depend on how much selecting I'm doing because I could essentially do it by hand. So you could take this tool here and just go like this and select all the surrounding counties. And then what you could do then is just do export, save selected features. If you do this, you're going to get everything still. This, this will just output the selected features. The other option is, so what you could do to undo that is deselect features from the current layer. And what you could do is select Philadelphia. And then in the tools, you can do a selection. So it is, so the way that I operate is I oftentimes know that, know what I want to do. I just need to find the tool. So I believe under research tools there's a select by location. So you could click that. And then you're going to use this intersect. And then you have to click on selected features only. So it's going to compare it to the selected features. If you don't click that, it's not going to work correctly. So if I hit run here, notice that it selected all of the intersecting, the ones that intersect Philadelphia County. But I don't want Philly in here. I only want, because remember, we're working on the ground, meaning the background map to show the context of, of where Philly is situated, right? Because Philly is situated here and it has New Jersey counties and it has Philly, uh, Pennsylvania counties. So what you could do is, depending on what computer you're using, you can click this arrow here. And I think it's the control, you would hit control on a window. So hold the control button down and then click on Philly. And then only those are selected. So then what you want to do is you want to go to export selected features as, and then you're going to want to go to the folder that you were working from. So for me, I have a folder called um, ground background data, and I'm just going to put this in here. I'm going to call it um, counties. Uh, interesting, my T on my keyboard does not work correctly. Um, counties surround PHL or something like that. And then you're going to hit save. And then you're going to hit OK. And then there you go. Now you have the ability to use that as a background. So now we can just turn this one off. We're not going to use this anymore. And then we're going to, you can basically zoom back in. I really should just save this as 22,000 because I keep um, going to a different location every single time. So what you could end up doing is I showed some of you this, but you can use something called a bookmark. So we can have a project bookmark. I haven't saved my project yet, but you can just do new spatial bookmark. And I can call this a uh, Philly map location or something like that. Again, my T on my keyboard doesn't work. And then you can hit save. And then if I do what I did before where I zoom out, I can just go to my user bookmarks. And there is my project bookmark is Philly location. You double click and it goes right back to where you were. Just a little trick. So that's how you could get the ground and then let's just say we put our planning districts back on and then we want to look carefully at the boundaries because 
typically there's a boundary that runs through uh, waterways. If you ever look on Google Street Maps, you'll see a boundary runs through there. So if that's the case, then our river needs to go below the county layer, but not the, let's see how I can do this. Yeah, I think, yeah, we can look at it. There's, I think there's one other step that we'd have to do in order to get that um, boundary to run through the river. Okay, yes, there is one other step in order to do that. And we basically need to create another file, right? So we have so far, we've uniquely created these files that makes this into like a donut, but we actually do need Philly as well. So I'm gonna show you why in a second. So we're gonna go back to here. I know this is a little tricky, but this is what you're gonna be running across when you're making a map because the data out there is not created for you to make the maps that you want, right? You need to edit the files and you spend most of your time prepping the files in order to begin the cartographic process. Okay, so what you can do here is we can use the selection button and we're just gonna select a single feature. I'm gonna click on that and then you're gonna click on Philly. We want Philly as a shape file all by itself. So we're gonna do data, selected features only, which means it's gonna give us Philly only. And I'm gonna call this Philly bounds. I have other versions that I've tested for myself, but here's version two. And then I'm gonna hit okay. And then if we turn the other ones off, here is our Philly layer. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make this hollow. I am gonna turn the stroke color off. So I just do uh, no brush. And then we just have this black line and we're gonna hit apply and we're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna, you'll see, you, it's hard to see if I turn this off, you can see, there you go. And then we're gonna put this on top and then turn the river back on. Notice the line running through the river. And then we have our surrounding counties and then our planning districts. So what, instead of having this like terrible reddish color, let's change this to some sort of gray. There we go. So I'm gonna use one of the lightest grays. We may have to uh, change our Philly map a little bit. So um, you can even either leave it like that if you want your planning districts to stand out a little bit as being unique, you could go ahead and use some other shading. I'm not really in the mode here to be selecting colors and things, but you could go like something like that. Right, so then we're not gonna talk about it today, but then you could go ahead and label these counties. Not the greatest of color selection, but what I do wanna point out is that when you were submitting maps number one, I was basically getting maps that looked like this. And by just doing a few little I don't know if they're tricks, but they're just gonna be normal things that you eventually do. You can turn these maps into more interesting um, visuals for people to look at. 